Welcome to the First Customers Podcast. Today we have Austin Linney, the CEO of Crementum Capital. He's doubled the revenue of one of his businesses every six months for the past year and a half, and he's involved in several other businesses. Austin, thank you for being on the show. Thanks, my man. You know, customer is how you it's, it's how you it's how you put food on the table. It's an important That's podcast, right. you know. It's all about the customers for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were chatting a little bit beforehand. I was explaining to him that, you know, I've been involved in several projects and there's always that moment where you have to figure out how to get customers, no matter what you've built or promised or whatever, you got to somehow connect with people and convince them to give you money. And maybe you can give us a little preview and, and then we'll go into your background more. But what do you think kind of the most important thing is about getting that first customer for a business? Um, well, you're not going to believe yourself. That you can do it. So there's a couple things that need to happen. Either you need to spin, you need to suspend belief and kind of live in. I saw something today that I thought was great. I think it's kind of something I live by on accident. You know, irrational optimism. Mm -hmm. You know, like energy creates everything, right? Look, I've coached 16 people a week for four and a half years, okay? Wow. 50 year olds, you know, 30, 20, millionaires, not millionaires. Uh, addiction, not addiction, all that kind of stuff. It all comes down to one thing. With 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 energy, you crack a door open to a new opportunity. With a new opportunity, anything can happen. It's it's the fact that we don't have the energy, we don't have the belief, and we don't have that stuff, and that really creates the momentum to feel like you're stuck in the mud. And so, my suggestion is, if you're you know, and this is going to be the anti, this is going to, this is going to suck for a lot of people because this is my, I'm a different kind of coach. I'm going to give you the freedom. If you're, if you're, if you're having a, a drow spell to just put it down. Seriously. I call it the 48 hours, no decision, decision. Hmm. Just walk away. You're pressing, you're forcing. The universe is not going to give you what you want because you're wanting too much. Walk away. Spend time with your kids, go for a drive, get out, change the environment, turn on some music, just put it down. Sometimes we can just press, press. I'm a, dude, I'm a force by nature. I'm a forcer. And uh, I read a book called The Surrender Experiment, changed my entire life. It was basically a story of a guy who was a freaking multimillionaire, and he basically just worked his entire life from start to finish on his gut. Like he didn't make any ra rational decisions. It was, well, he would meditate about it and you go, okay, I feel this way. And then he would do that. Yeah. And then, and then he would never make a like, oh, this is what I should do. And he would like, and then he started this like business out of nothing. And then like, it became like worth hundreds of millions. Like, I think, I think sometimes in life we let our logical brain take over too much. Right. And, and yes, you have to have parameters and you, you know, don't go spend crazy money, but but you could want it too much, and that's the reason that you don't have it. So you've had a lot of success over the past few years, uh, especially, and you're in a lot of interesting projects. But let's back up a little bit and get into your background. Um, mm -hmm. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Houston, Texas. Uh, my dad, as I grew up, my dad was probably – and I didn't realize this because him and I didn't speak for 20 years plus, give or take. Mm. Uh, he was the first entrepreneur I ever knew. And I didn't realize this till about wow. a year ago, actually. Uh, and while I was in Costa Rica with my coach, he was a dentist and he became one of the best dentists in the South, uh, probably in Texas. Very successful. As I grew up, we started living in better and better houses. Uh, I didn't really know what it meant as a kid, you know, uh, but then we moved across the street from like uh, Avery Johnson and like Robert Ory, like rocket players on the golf course. And I was like, oh, like we, we have money, you know. And so like yeah. you start realizing, right, I went to a very uh, high end public school. But when I was 17, my parents, um, they said, look, you, you, you don't stop getting in trouble. You're in trouble almost every day. So either you're going to military school or, or Beaumont, Texas. And I was like, well, I don't know where Beaumont is, but I'm, I'd rather go there. And so uh, it's where my parents grew up, which is almost in Louisiana. And uh, three months into moving there and starting a new high school at 17, I went from 4,200 kids to 100 
uh, and everybody wore camo and it was way different and, and, and the whole nine. And we lived in the five acres. Uh, my parents came to me and said, we're getting a divorce. Mm. And I proceeded to blame myself for that, uh, internalize that. And then that proceeded me into a, a 20 year bout with uh, meth, cocaine and, and alcohol uh, and was homeless briefly for a little bit, slept underneath the stairs of a closet at a buddy's house for, for a couple months. A lot of twists and turns, a lot of, uh, you know, I, I, I would say that I've had about seven or eight rock bottoms. Uh, that would be an understatement. Even when it got better, even when I got sober, I got during COVID, I got laid off from my private equity job and divorced in the same six day span. Whoa. Uh, and then I started a podcast the next week. So it was, it was like, it was like, it was like, it was like I was like, it was like my therapeutic, uh, you know, kind of thing, right. Yeah. To do the podcast. And I, I wound up recording, uh, 275 podcasts in 11 months. And I was just meeting, I was doing nine a day, eight a day and just meeting billionaires and so many people. And I look back at that time and, uh, it was so, it was so helpful. It was like, dude, it was like having free therapy, like just talking it out for hours with like random people who had lived, been through bankruptcy and divorce and all sorts of stuff. And it was, it was really, uh, the catalyst to, to what you see today was kind of taking the action. All the, all the contacts, my business partners now are from the podcast, the, the business, you know, the, I've, the, the guy I met who was a former major league baseball player, his, his, his fiance is my, my mentor and my business partner. You know, everything I have is because of, you know, I decided to not uh, look at the ratings and the downloads of the podcast for the first uh, two and a half years because I knew mentally I couldn't handle it. Right. Uh, and I just I just recorded and I said, if it, it affects one person, then we're good. And that's kind of where I sat with it. And it's been a, it's been a wild ride. And what's the name of your podcast? So it's called Construct Your Life, How to Build a Lifestyle, Not a Bank Account. Uh, we also had another one we did for, for 50 episodes called Brain Dump, The Psychology of the Mind. Um, mm. That's I did with a buddy. We stopped doing that one. I'm about to start a new one um, all about trades, uh, trade jobs, uh, HVAC, plumbing, okay. M&A, business, uh, kind of just become that resource for, for the techs and the companies that we're buying. Uh, but, yeah, I love it. You know, I, I think that I think that. You know, I listened to a podcast this morning, guy doing two point, you know, two, two, 210 million in one location of HVAC. And it's like, you, that, that was an hour long episode, but there's, but there's two sentences in that episode that changed my, you know, changed my perspective on my company. Like, that's what it's about. It's not about, you know, understanding everything. It's that, that word hits you right in the right time, right when you need it. Right. Yeah. And, you know, one of my favorite things I've ever heard, one of my quotes is I can't control what I, uh, I can't control. The only thing I can control is what I say. I can't control what you hear. Hmm. So understanding that I can't control when you hear my message, if it's three years from now or two years from now, but all I have, all I have to do is just give it the message. And then everything takes out for, from there. Right. And I think that's what's so exciting about, you know, I've watched, I've watched introverts, you know, who, you know, never, you've never thought they would have done a podcast. Now they're on their hundredth episode and they're like, oh, this is so great. And, you know, it's just, you kind of like live through the podcast and you can watch yourself kind of like, you know, grow up, right? It's, it's, it's a wild kind of marker for life. And it's an interesting way to make connections with people. I mean, that's what I've experienced. Just the, the few episodes I've done, it's been really neat having that way of just connecting with people across the world about, you know, some specific niche topic. Um, for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, when you were a kid, you say, and you're, you know, you're getting into trouble a lot and that kind of thing. Did you have any business related experience as a little kid, like sales, fundraisers, lemonade not, stand type? Yeah, no, no, not really. Uh, I played a lot of sports. Um, for me, I always had a lot of abilities of reading people, not really knowing what it, what it meant. Like, so there's a couple things about me. That's a little interesting. Um, uh, I have what would be classified as we'll call it a photographic memory, but more like perfect recall. 
uh, hmm. where like I could do a podcast three weeks, you know, today, and I could tell you what you and I talked about three weeks from now. Yeah. Like I have that kind of like That's weird, cool. you know, memory, right? So I had that, and then I had the I was a big empath, you know, em empath, right? I always knew hmm. what people were feeling, thinking, not really knowing how to utilize it, but but really being really being looked down upon in, in high school and, oh, he's too much trouble and blah, 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 and, you know, all this stuff. And there's a lot of reasons. You know, I dropped out of college three times, you know. Uh, it just wasn't uh, wasn't my thing. And, you know, when I was in college, the first time I got jumped by a bunch of guys and they broke every bone in the right side of my face. So, like, there's just so many stories, right, um, of just, like, trying to fit in the mold of what I should do right? Your dad's a doctor and all this stuff and, and just never really yielding my own path until I found like true personal development and, and true masterminds and getting around people and just realizing that I didn't even need to make, I mean, guys, I turned 40, you know, two months ago. And I would say that me and my dad six months prior to that. So we're talking 39 finally reconciled like it's not like you know I, like I, I love yeah. how people are like oh i'm 32 and like i need to get my shit together. it's like yeah dude it takes some while if you're if you're standing in your own way of victimhood it takes mm. some while to to clean out the, the years in the system but uh you know the the older i get um the more i learn to smile more and give grace more often and i think if you can yeah. do that with yourself and others i think you're going to be in a good place <laughs> What was your first like paying job coming out of childhood? You said you did sports. <laughs> What's that first job? Dude, that first job was Marble Slap, dude. It was uh, it's a true story. And and I'm sorry if Marble I offend Slap. anybody, but I just speak true. I, okay, sorry if I offend yeah. anybody. You know, like Cold Stone? You know, like like you, the Cold Stone Creamery? Like yeah, ice yeah, cream ice cream. Place. Okay, Marble Slab was before Cold Stone, okay? So, like, it was me. Okay. It was me. I'm not sure. I'm sorry if I just offended anybody. It was me and an Indian owner and Indian staff, I was the only white guy on staff. And he said, uh, like, you're gonna do bathroom duty, you're gonna do all this, mop the floors, you're gonna do all this stuff, I was like 17. Uh, I had to clean up uh, a lot of bathroom things and, and like, it was just, it was a lot, man. Like, you know, and, and I think I worked there for like maybe a month and I was like, dude, I can't, I can't do this. Uh, so like I left. Well, when I moved, my, both my parents had been in the restaurant business. So they're like, you really need to go in the restaurant business. So I go in the restaurant business uh, at like 17 and I'm, I'm like bar backing. I'm doing some other stuff. But I remember this day. I swear to God, this was 23 years ago. And I remember it like it was yesterday. So we did training for like three weeks or two weeks, like training in the back of the house, training in the front of the house. And like it was my first shift, <clears throat> my first shift ever. Um, uh, at the restaurant, right? So with me and this other kid and we're working this small section in the bar, which is like the cocktail area where it's like first come, first serve. It's a very busy restaurant. 30 minutes into the shift, the person that's training with me says, I can't do this. I'm out. I quit and just leaves. <laughs> so here I am first day and it's busy as all hell and i'm supposed to only have like three tables but now i have like eight and so it was bananas but i got everybody served i got everything done it was awesome it was one of those moments and i had and i had some money to show for it and i was like okay this you is got more tips right i was like yeah i was like this is cool i was like i can do this because like yeah. i'm add like really add and there's a there's a there's a well-known sci sci you know, scientific thing, it's called hyperfocus. So meaning that if you're ADHD and you're, and you're in your zone of genius and you're in your flow, then you can enter into what is called hyperfocus, which is even more focused than a regular human can get. And that's what I realized I could do when it came to bartending and waiting. And so, okay. and so I started leaning on this and I started bar backing and then, and then I worked so hard that I got moved into the bar with like the two top bartenders and they loved me because I worked and I kept my mouth shut. But I watched, I swear, dude, if you ever want to literally screw a psychology degree, if you want to see real life, work at a bar for like five years, dude, she was, she was good looking and he was good looking. He was a model. And I watched him take the women and her take the men. 
and we just made so much money. And I watched the different reactions of people and you hear stories and it, it was really like there, there, I don't, there, nothing better. If you ever watch me now, if you ever spent time with me and let's say we're on a call with like six people, I can juggle all the personalities on the call. I'm, I'm leading the call. I'm always leading the call. It's that's all from the restaurant hmm. business. It's all from talking to hundreds of thousands of different people from all different walks of life. Uh, yeah. Hotel manager, bar manager, selling wine. I sold wine for 20 years, selling wine for 20 years and coming up with the stories and customers. If you open your ears, customers will tell you exactly what you need to do to be successful. I'm not, I didn't say they were always yeah. right. I said, but if you open your ears, there's truth mm -hmm. in there somewhere. That's good. I was just about to ask, okay, any lessons you learned from those early jobs? Mm -hmm. And there you go. That's solid stuff. The, the, one of the big lessons was at some point you're going to realize that there's, no matter what you do, not everybody's going to be happy. Mm. And when you can realize that it says more about them than it does you, then you're good. Yeah. So let's start. So that's like, you know, broadly. That's 17 to like 26. All right. So let's talk about maybe getting close to starting your own business or getting involved with a business where you're having to get those first customers. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> so I had wanted to leave the restaurant business for like five years. True story. I have no problem saying that I was in the top 1% of what I did. Uh, hmm. I came up with drink menus. I was, a, I worked at the top restaurants in the, in the country. My dreams were bigger than the people I was around and I just couldn't get out because I, nobody bothered me. I make good money. I work when I want to, I make cash. And, uh, you know, I started getting the itch for like, for, for Airbnb. So I started doing Airbnb on the side. And when I joined a mastermind, I started a company with these guys and I realized that the only way that I was going, and I, and I, and by the way, I'm not saying I recommend this for everybody. I knew the only way that I would get out is I would have to burn the boat. It's as simple as that. I, I, hmm. I, I knew I couldn't. And so we started this company and we started, uh, and I'm going to get to the, I'm going to get to the story. So we started yeah. the company and, uh, we, you know, we got a couple clients and like, I was supposed to quit like six months later, but like, I got so upset. I just quit. And they were like, Oh my God, what did you do? And, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I just, I can't do it anymore. And so like, I went all in on this. I'm traveling, I'm doing all this stuff. Well, three months into that business, uh, you know, we had a disagreement with one of the owners. I had to, I lost $30,000. I walked away from the company cause I just didn't want to deal with this guy. And then I worked private equity. And then I didn't like that. And then the whole thing with COVID happened and my divorce and I got laid off and all that stuff. And so this is exact, I'm telling verbatim exactly how it happened. I had a buddy reach out to me, one of my oldest friends, and he goes, Hey, I like you. I feel like you could, he you could hold me accountable. He's like, uh, I want to hire you to coach me. And I'm like, no, 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 not happening. I knew I wanted to coach. But I was, I was, I was 36, I, 45 was when I wanted to coach. I, I had my own plans. And yeah. so he said, well, that's cute, but I sent you the money in Venmo already. So deal with it. And I was like, <laughs> all right, fine, 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 fine. And I'm actually going to do a little audible here on your podcast. We're going to call it okay. first, second customer podcast. So I, 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 he pays me a little bit. I'm, I'm coaching him. No big deal. And it took me, man, it was like, three months, I couldn't get another client like to save my life. And I was telling one of my mentors who does, I'm not kidding when I say this, he does 450 transactions a year in real estate. He owns like nine companies. Whoa. Dude is a savage, like five That's kids, crazy. no marketing, no nothing. Doesn't own a day. laptop. Yeah. He's a killer. Okay. <laughs> so I'm telling him that I can't, I can't find another client. I'm, going through my divorce. I'm, I'm down in Florida. I'm, I'm hanging out with a friend, just kind of biding my time. Same sitch ovation. He says, I need you to, I just coach me four sessions 
And hmm. I go, no, I'm, what am I going to add value to you? No, I'm not doing it. He goes, well, tough crap. The money's in your Venmo, deal with it. And the, <laughs> same situation, right? So he, he, picture me, a guy that probably makes, I don't even know how, he makes like 150 grand a month. What am I going to tell a, a, a divorced, just started my business guy? What am I going to, dude, I am hyperventilating all the way up until the call. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. What do I do, what do I do, what do I do? So we, we have the call <laughs> and like 45 minutes in, I'm listening to him, I'm listening to him. And then boom, I, I crack him with like a great insight. And he just like mm -hmm. leans back and he's just like, oh my God. he goes, that's exactly what I needed to hear. I don't even need to do any other sessions. That was worth it. Boom. I'm out and just leaves. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm Crazy. like, he's a, he's a trip by the way. And I'm like, okay. Okay. I'm walking afterwards. I'm thinking to myself, okay, what just happened here? Okay. Okay. He didn't hire me to run his business. He hired me to be an outside observer. So, th so they don't need to yeah. hire me for my skill. They just need to hire me for somebody that cares about them that can see something that maybe they can't see. Yeah. Well, in that I'm case, in well, in that case, I can, I can coach anybody. And then I started getting a couple millionaires and then I started getting, and then it just started snowballing. Hmm. And it's like one of my favorite, favorite things my friend has ever said to me, she's an amazing coach. Sometimes you don't love yourself enough to change that you have to borrow the belief of others long enough till you believe yourself. It's good. And I believe this guy, dude, if I coach him, who can I coach? So, so the question that you have to ask yourself is that 500 bucks he gave me, how much do you think that 500 bucks is worth now? That 500 bucks is worth about four, six, seven million dollars. When it's all said and done. how it affected his decisions after that. No, no, no. On him. But I'm talking about me. Oh, gotcha. Him, him putting that 500 bucks in and me being able to buy companies and me to grow a coaching business and me to start other companies. Like if gotcha. I would have gave up, if he wouldn't have sent me that 500 bucks, who knows? Right. I see. That first customer kind of snowballed almost just within your own mind, snowballing that confidence within you to keep going after more customers. Exactly. And the first customer I actually had didn't pay me now that I just remembered this, but five hmm. minutes into my first coaching call, he's got two kids. He goes, Hey, I want to divorce my wife. And I go, am I, dude, I started sweating. I was like, Oh, this is Damn. real. Oh, this is real. This isn't some play thing. And yeah. When you're, when you're affecting people's lives and big decisions and jobs changing and all these things, they're spending money, they're investing in you a, a time. You really realize how important this one-on-one -on -one interaction is, this, 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 this little thing, right? And when, when it's a friend, it's just advice. But when you're a coach or you're a therapist, like it matters. And I, I hope that mm -hmm. anybody that, that takes on the profession mm -hmm. really, really understands the gravity of what's going on. Yeah. So it's almost like you were kind of thrown into the coaching business by the first few customers that were kind of <laughs> forcing you exactly. to coach them. But I will, but I will turned it into a business yeah. and intentionally started to go after people. hundred percent. But I, what I, what I will tell you this, and I'm, I'm a, I'm an interesting cat and this has nothing to do with my one-on-one -on -one clients or me talking bad about them. Two weeks in, I said to myself, this isn't enough. It's not the money. It's not that I'm not affecting them. I love one-on-one -on -one coaching, but my number one why is impact at scale. Hmm. How do I impact at scale? And that's when I landed on small businesses. Okay. That makes sense. I do. I got 30 employees that have families. Right. And then we're, and then we're providing to the customers. Now we're talking about multiple layers of impact that we can, that we can do. Right. No, I, I feel that strongly. Uh, one of my little mottos I say to myself sometimes, and even on the podcast a little bit, it, it's like one of the best things you can do is build a good business that solves a problem that creates jobs. 
because you're making the world a better place if you're doing those things. You're solving a problem for some customers, creating jobs for people. It's one of the best things a person can do. I would say one of the most alarming things to me as I've, as I've taken on the CEO role in multiple companies now over the last year and a half is how many times I get this statement, wow, I didn't know bosses like you could exist. And I'm like, hmm. the fact that you're telling me that tells me that how bad it is out there. That's scary to me. And so now we got to go create as many jobs as possible to change the narrative. And that's yeah. like my only thing I care about is creating jobs right now. Dude, when you have a 51-year-old man that sits in the parking lot and cries because mm. he has a new job and he can support his family, I mean, what better yeah. thing in the entire world? I don't know. I don't know what if there is. And yeah, it's hard and there's a lot of work and it's crazy. Man, I have never felt fulfillment like this in my life. Hmm. That's awesome. All right. So now you said you got 30 employees and started off, I guess, this phase of your life. The coaching business was the first new business. And I know you're involved with other ones now. How did the other businesses get started? So I've ran from a lot of businesses a lot, meaning like I don't want to start them, but yet somehow they get started up or I just get asked so many times. This one I would say is more calculated. Um, I actually had the idea for what we're doing right now two and a half years ago. Uh, I would say I was searching for the right players to put in the right seats for that long. Had a couple false starts. Uh, read a book called Buy Them Build that changed my life and, and kind of yes. understanding that I wanted to get out of the, the, the startup yeah. game. Love uh, that book. Yeah. And, and, and here we are. And, you know, we'll close on the business in the next two weeks. Uh, we've been in, you know, negotiations and contracts for six months. So this will be the first of one. I've already got, you know, two and three right behind it, fold in, tuck ins. Um, it's when you understand what your purpose is as a team, right? For me, where this kind of hit home for me was uh, like August, September, I guess, of, of this last year. I was sick. I don't get sick, but I was sick. I was down for like two and a half weeks, like with a uh, COVID or something. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But I was, I was sick and I was, I was grumpy. I was tired. I felt terrible, but we had so many deals going on. I was trying to like work through it. And I realized that my team, my other owners, they were grumpy too. And I realized that, that, that my sole purpose above everything else is to bring the energy is to bring the optimism, the attitude. I am the lightning rod to the way the engine runs. And I realize that I have to protect that about myself more than anything. And everybody has their own role, but I'm the fuel in the train. And if I'm not giving myself what I need, then we're going to be in a bad situation. What do you mean by that? Like if you're not giving yourself what you need, if I'm, like not, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not, in yeah, if I'm not taking time, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not over pressing, like meaning, um, uh, one of the things I do for myself, and this is just me and you can steal it if you want. I don't really care. I am a all in or all out guy. There's no in between with me. Meaning, uh, Monday is my coaching day and I do meetings and podcast Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, I schedule nothing. Nothing's ever scheduled. It, I have things that are going on. I'm playing golf with investors or I'm catching up with people or I'm working, but I keep those days free in case I want to pack it in. But like those days on Monday, Tuesdays, yeah. you know, today I'll, I'm working from, you know, 7 a.m. to, you know, 7 straight through. So, so I've kind of found the way that I work best. And yeah. like, I think what a lot of people do, let's say, for instance, let's say a, somebody wants to meet with you on Thursday at two o'clock, let's just say, right. And you don't have a meeting after 10 on Thursday. Well, that person is going to schedule that meeting, but I got a better idea. Is there an hour before or after on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of the next week that you could slot it in? Now you have yeah. to open up your whole afternoon to do work for yourself or hang with a family. It's I, what hit me like six months ago is I'm not selling anything anymore. I'm not selling anything. Hmm. I'll, I'll dictate my schedule 
and I'm not, this is, I'm not saying this because I have a bunch of money. My ex-wife took most of my money. I'm just saying, but <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. I'm doing this because I value my flow and my work time. And if you could spend that time doing something else or hanging out with kids or working on your own project and then slot it in, like perfect example is let's say you have a nine o'clock on Tuesday. Can they do 10 on Tuesday? Right. And now you're in the flow of the meetings instead of having this one off meeting that you had to wait for three hours for. And it yeah. feels like a drag instead of in the flow of the work. Gotcha. So kind of group the meetings together. Exactly. Time block. Yeah. Chunk it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Crementum Capital, that's the business that's buying up other businesses? Correct. It, it's a, we call ourselves okay. the anti-private equity firm. So uh, basically our premise is cash flowing businesses, storage facility, uh, hotels to park money, and then uh, buy up uh, existing businesses that have been in business for longer than 10 years. Mm. Okay. And you said this HVAC company is the first kind of yeah. in the – They've been in business 25 philosophy. years. Yeah, yeah. HVAC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so as you've gotten into that business, I know this is – is it already closed or you're in the process? Two weeks. Or two two weeks. weeks. Now, I okay. have a unique – uh, relationship that I've struck with the seller. I have never heard of this before. I didn't know it was not a thing. So I'll just take it as a, a win for me. He was so ready to be done that he hired me and my partner as consultants for the last two months, 60 days to run the business leading up to closing. Wow. So all the things we wanted to do in the first quarter, I've already done. Wow. So, okay. So you are learning about the operations of the business. No, and I'm running the business. I have full control okay. of the financials the last 60 days. I hired wow. uh, 13 people. Wow. I bought five vans. Okay. Yeah. So I'm running the business. Okay. Already. So, yeah. So I can ask you questions directly about that business. Then. Of course. So how does an HVAC company get customers, for example? Well, it's interesting. And you're not finding out where I am. So stay away from me, everybody. But long story short, <laughs> I thought, that I wanted to be in a city, right? It's easier to get talent. You know, there's more customers. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. I'm in the middle of nowhere. And the seller, his competition either went out of business, bankrupt, or they passed away, or they're retired. So it's just me. We have done, in 25 years, zero marketing. Zero. Nothing. Ever. I think the last thing he did was maybe a radio ad once. Like, that's it. Like, 10 years ago. <laughs> right? And so you have this very great business, but, but I describe it as this. It's like a boat going through the ocean that has a money funnel thrown in the boat, but it has 30 holes. That's, that's this business. Uh, you know, efficiency, they're doing everything on paper. No CRM. Yeah. No, you know, there's no efficiency whatsoever. And so just bringing in the efficiencies, SOPs, EOS system, sales, uh, maintenance agreements, like, I think we're going to double revenue in the first year. Okay. Cause yeah, you are, it's just a pure opportunity. Then if they're already mm -hmm. profitable and established with customers, mm -hmm. then everything mm -hmm. you do is just improving. Something it's gravy. That's already it's gravy. And, and, and understanding that, that understand that you're think about it this way. The only way to describe it is really simple. It's the Titanic. It's moving in a direction and yeah. you have to literally take it with pure energy, will, and optimism and flip this baby 180 degrees around. That's what has to happen because hmm. you have older techs that are stuck in their ways and this is the only way they want to do it. But the problem is I thought that I would be met with a lot of resistance. They've all wanted this stuff for years. Wow. So, yeah, I might lose some people. Oh, well. Like, I just, I can't spend my days focused on not people, not like, look, here, here's the truth. And, and I'm, this is, I swear to God, this statement is not an ego statement. It's just a true statement. I'm a likable person. <laughs> I have people's good will and interest in mind. If you can't get on board with that, I don't know what to tell you. If that scares you. That says more about you than it does me. Like I'm buying a 80 acre hunting facility for my techs because they love hunting. Wow. Like how can you not get behind that? 
you know, but so many people, when they go to buy a business, they're like, what are they going to do? What's, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like they I get it. A clean house or something. And just well, I get it. Everybody. And they might. Yeah. And, and that's a possibility. And if we were a private equity yeah, firm, yeah. maybe so, but that's right. not me. And so I more importantly have to, cause it's a small town. I more importantly have to gain everybody's trust. Mm. And so how I've done that is gone to dinner with some of the techs and their families, gone out to their house, sit on the porch, talk for two hours. On, on Monday, one next Monday, one of the owners are coming in, the other owners, and we're going to go shoot explosives with automatic rifles. <laughs> like, you know, my, my awesome. advisor said, can I come work for you? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you know, like, here's what I'm saying. Yeah. I hope everybody that's listening that owns a business. You have to go the extra mile these days. Have to. It's not an option. Mm -hmm. Have to. And if it's a two-hour conversation with one of your lead managers or somebody, just, they just want to be heard, right? The same way the customer wants to be heard. I'll tell you exact situation that just happened. Just happened. I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm listening in the corner. The guy doesn't know I'm the new owner, and he is just irate. Well, well, you came down, and you worked on this thing, and blah, 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 and it was a $2,100 bill. And we weren't in the wrong. I know we weren't in the wrong. They told him it shouldn't be looked at. We did it anyway. We charged him for our time. He was pissed. So he only wanted to pay a hundred bucks. And I said, you know what? How about I take care of that for you? And he was like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. You pay your hundred bucks. Why would I do that? You know what he did right after that? He scheduled a walkthrough with our new salesman tomorrow on Wednesday this week that we're going to have to put in a 15 to $17,000 system. Wow. And how much <laughs> did you cover on his bill? 2000. So we'll, yeah. you know, I'm going to make 15 X. Right. Yeah. And, but more importantly, but more importantly, I don't even care about that money. He's sending a message to everybody else in the community. Oh, they did this. Yeah. Sometimes right. you sometimes you make money and sometimes you send messages. Right. Okay. On that note, um, because that's like an extremely strong mm -hmm. part of a marketing funnel, you know, that word of mouth, that customer testimony uh, getting put out there. Um, and I know we've only got a few minutes uh, left in your availability, but uh, if we could do just a brief little audit of maybe your plans on the marketing side of things, if you've got any to add to the business. Um, I know you're talking about patching holes, but also is that part of the improvement you're seeing? The ability to. Yeah. Do I don't, some I don't know if the, yeah, I don't know if this is going to make me a bad guy, but I'm sorry. There is some comp. So we do have a little competition like 60 miles away. And the only reason why I'm upset is he, is he tried to steal four of my guys and I kept every one of them. So what we're going to do is we already do a lot of work in their area. We're going to start running ads in their area. Uh, and, and, and so, so the, the basic premise is, is super simple. I added three more vans. I hired 13 mm -hmm. more people. Uh, I'm losing about three or four to retirement. So I filled in some gaps, got some guys, got some helpers that we're going to train up. We are putting in service Titan CRM to streamline yeah. uh, optimization that. on that. We're redoing, uh, moving off paper. We brought in a third party payroll, a third party bookkeeper. So those are how we're streamlining those operation. I brought in a project manager to manage the project in between the sales person and cause the sales nice. guy's doing everything. And then we're going to re SEO the website and then yeah. we're going to start running ads in April or May. And then we're going to, um, rewrap all the vehicles and I cleaned up the logo and that's a basic, that's about it for the first yeah. 60 or 90 days. We're still so cool. busy that I don't really need to run ads. We get phone calls every day, but, uh, that's just kind of yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah. Awesome. And do you have any like platforms specifically in mind, like running ads on Google or Facebook or just, just Facebook. One of the things I realized, okay. uh, as I've talked to 65, 70 year old, owners of businesses, which the guy I'm talking to Wednesday is one of those guys, no matter if they hate tech, guess what they mm -hmm. always have? Facebook. F Facebook. Yeah. He goes, oh yeah, I saw it on the Facebook. I'm like, oh, okay. well that's <laughs> where we're going to run the ads then. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So, cool. Yeah. So we'll do it there. One of the things that's worked really good too in the past, and we're going to bring out, we'll we'll thank them, send them a magnet, direct mail to our customers. Okay. Direct mail. Mm-hmm. All right. I think you're one of the the few that's going to be utilizing physical mail because that's one of the mm-hmm. questions I ask every episode and. Few people. Yeah, we're old school. It's old school up here, man. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Old, especially older community. Yeah. Yeah. For a local business. Mm-hmm. What about sure. uh, other traditional media like newspaper ads or. No, one uh, of the things I'm doing that's super or... important. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, here's a little yeah. tip for anybody out there. You want to, this will shake it up. Best thing I ever heard in my life. This guy who ran a plumbing <laughs> company, he ran his ad on a billboard upside down on purpose. <laughs> and he said he got so many phone. He said he thinks he made half a million dollars because people calling <laughs> saying it was upside down. And then he got, you need any plumbing services? Yeah. So Just getting the foot in the door. That's one of later. the things I'm doing is I'm joining the board of the chamber of commerce. So that's what okay. I'm going to do. So that's going to be my kind of indirect way. In. And then we're going to be donating to the art, the art field. It's a big artist community up here. So yeah, a lot of, a okay. lot of hand to hand stuff. Okay. A lot of in person. Okay. Um, all right. That makes sense. And so this was a business in the place you were already living or did you like relocate? No, I, I I relocated a big, big sacrifice for me and my fiance. We have a lot of County contracts and I thought it was super important. You can't just be a nameless face where we are. So I thought it was super important that I came up this way. So, so you said you have a sales team and right now they're just, or a salesperson, they're just fielding. They just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is just that just random cold calls? Existing? They're not, they're, they're, oh, no cold calls? Yeah. There's no, 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 no. They're taking cold calls in. We're not, we're doing oh, nothing gotcha. outbound. Yeah. So gotcha. So they're getting, yeah. The bigger issue calls. that I'm solving right now is my, my sales guys are spending about 80% of the time in the office doing dumb paperwork. So we're going to hmm. hire a VA to do all their paperwork for them so they can be out in the community to, taking people to lunches, setting meetings. There you like go. That. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think, I mean, we've covered it, man. Uh, and I don't want to take you over the time, but uh, this has been really interesting. And I feel like there's a lot more that we could dig into. And you seem like somebody full of stories. Um, but I appreciate the time you've taken today. And uh, I think there's a lot of little golden nuggets people could get from this. Awesome. Uh, my last advice for everybody. Remember, the most important first customer you need to sell is the person looking in the mirror. Mm. And if you sell that person on why you're amazing and stop playing small, then you can sell anybody else. That's awesome. Um, and why don't you take just one last minute here and if you like one of your target customers is listening, whether it's for the coaching side or mm-hmm. even the local HVAC side, uh, what's that short little pitch to that person, that target customer of yours who's listening? You have to be, you you have to believe that you deserve great service. You have to believe that it's important for you to feel comfortable in your day in day life. I I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to give you an opportunity to be happier. That's it. Uh, the moment that you start selling people, they turn their ears off. It's a, it's a proven fact. Uh, one of my favorite people in the entire world is Oren Claff. Uh, he wrote a book called Flip the Script, Pitch Anything. Uh, he's a he's a rainmaker. They call him the rainmaker. He does crazy deals. There's three minds. You have three minds. And one of those minds is the crocodile mind. The crocodile mind is the first person, the first mind that exists when you walk into a room, anything. And the crocodile mind cannot understand numbers and facts. So you have to... You have to sell to somebody in the lowest form of what they would do as their, their, the second and third mind catches up. And so uh, okay. pattern interruption, don't use big words, all that kind of stuff, but like let them kind of, and then when they flip into mind two and three, that's when you can do it. So just a little, little trick there. Oh, that's good. All right. Um, you said something uh, before the show, and I don't even think it got uh, mentioned, but you said – one of your mottos is you're not in business. You're in the people business. Correct. Yeah. Um, does it, doesn't matter what, does what you mean real quick. Well, it doesn't matter what you do. I've got to service my techs, make sure they're happy. Their home life's good. Cause they're going to get better yeah. service to the customers. I've got to make the customers happy to know that their needs have been wanted. 
I don't care what product you're selling. You're, there's somebody on the other end of that line that you have to understand the emotional levels that they're playing in and, and realize that, you know, just ask the question, is, is everything all right? Are you okay? Is it really about this? And understand that everything exists with around the people. So just learn how to sell people, learn uh, psychology, learn emotional stability, and then you're going to be a great salesman. You're going to be a great uh, company that gives your product to customers and stuff like that. Awesome. That's a great place to end it, Austin. I appreciate your time. You got it. Thanks, man.